estamos en la destilería New Deal. Lance, right? Sí. Iván. <laughs> mucho gusto. Igualmente, <laughs> ah, habla español. Ah, un poquito. Un poquito. No mucho. Yeah, so uh, this is a new deal. We started 2004. We moved into this building in 2012. Uh, so that's about the amount of time we've been doing each spirit. So we started in 2004 with just vodka, and everything in our product lineup has sort of grown from that. Um, but we really didn't have any room for like barrel aging and things like that in our yeah. previous location. So since we've been in here, we've been doing more like whiskeys, rums, barrel aged products. Um, but a lot of those have been just single barrel releases that we only sell here. Only so, here? Yeah, here only. Like the vodkas and the liqueurs we sell to other states. We sell them to the bars and liquor stores. Um, but the, up until just recently, all of our aged spirits were here only. Um, so this is the first, like last month we came out with a wheat whiskey, and then just yesterday we bottled a rye whiskey, which are now being distributed to bars and liquor stores. So, oh, nice. Yeah, it's kind of a new, exciting territory we're getting into. Um, I see ginger liquor. Yeah, that is actually our best seller here in the tasting room, also oh. in markets outside of Portland that is our best seller. So, yes. Yeah, vodka is our, still our uh, flagship here in Portland, but then ginger liqueur is quickly becoming... Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, for sure. So now yeah, we can head back and actually, you know, look at the still. Okay. It's a cool place, man. Yeah. We, uh, we do almost all of our products on this setup. We just change the configuration of the still based on whatever it is we're distilling that day. So it's a Christian Carl still out of Germany, um, and there's you know, sort of various different components to it, but we just change the configuration depending on what we're distilling. So most basic setup would literally be just pot still straight to the condenser, which is what we do a lot for our whiskeys. Um, just a very classic pot still distillation. We don't use the columns for, for that. Um, oh, the, so you're doing pot still for whiskey. For whiskey, yeah. yeah. And then the middle column here, uh, we use that mostly for like brandies and rums. Uh, there's five distillation plates in there, so we can turn those on or off and use all five of them or use just one or two. And that gives us a little bit more control. We can clean it up a little bit more than what we would normally do for whiskey, but we aren't all going all the way up to like vodka, for example. The two back columns in the far back there, those really tall ones, those are for vodka almost exclusively. So there's 11 distillation plates in each column, and they're kind of daisy chained together, so it okay. goes through both of those. Uh, so it's almost like redistilling it 22 times all in one pass, because at each heat plate, it uh, recondenses and re-evaporates, and then recondenses and re-evaporates. So, so it's basically like, you are distilling... Uh, each uh, spirit at a time. Yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of cool. We start with the mash and the pot still, you know, it's somewhere 10%, a little bit less than 10%. And then by the time it goes through each one of those heat plates and gets to the other end, it's all the way up to, you know, 95% to, to be vodka. So uh, what we used to have to do is literally distill it with just a pot still, put it back into the still, distill it again, put it back into the still, distill it again. Now that we have this setup, we can go, we do two runs usually. We do a stripping run from the mash to literally just get as much of the alcohol as we can without making any distinct cuts as far as flavor goes. And then we put that back in the still and we, we turn on the two back columns and then we run it one more time and we make a heads cut and a tails cut. Okay. And that middle part, what we call the hearts, is what actually goes into the bottle and we sell as New Deal Vodka. And we do that similar process with the other products too. We just don't use as many distillation plates to clean it up quite as much. Okay. So like the whiskey is probably what people would consider more of like the dirtiest, I guess you would say. We don't take as much out of the whiskey. Yeah, we want to yeah. leave as much of the flavor in there. Um, so that is really just pot still straight to the condenser. So you don't do any chill filtering or any of that? Not currently. Uh, we are looking into that because we're actually, what most of this mess is over here is pear brandy. Uh, it's the first year we're doing pear brandy. So oh. uh, we have literally, I think probably 12,000 pounds of pears sitting there right no. now that are about to get smashed <laughs> into pear sauce next week. And then we'll let that ferment for a week and then we'll distill that into pear brandy. So uh, people at the right bin. We just got them in like two days ago, so I mean they're still pretty. Yeah, hot. yeah, yeah. They're... Check them out. But uh, in a week from now, they'll be nice and soft, and then we uh, literally just throw them through like a fruit mill and turn them into pear sauce. Yeah. Add some yeast and stuff to that and let it ferment. And that's awesome. That's it. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Pretty cool. Yeah, and it, it uh, comes out really nice. We've done an apple brandy before with a similar process, but this is the first time we've done pear. Todas esas peras ya las destilaron una vez, la misma cantidad. Y este fue el resultado. Brandy de pera. Yeah, so now that we're doing that, we're actually looking into like, you know, chill filtering and things like that. We do rough filters with like, you know, 
uh, micron filters and stuff to get particles yeah. out, but we don't do chilled filtering to like get out, you know, some no oils, oils and things yeah. like that. Yeah, not yet. We are now that we're getting more into like fruit brandies and unaged brandy. We're gonna probably start doing that. Yeah, but uh, we do some private contract stuff. So some of these barrels that we have here are like uh, we do Hub, which is a local brewery. They bring us their beer wash, and we distill that into whiskey for them. So it's literally their, yeah. their beer, essentially, without any hops in it. We distill that and barrel age it for a couple years, and then they sell it as their brewer's whiskey. Um, one of the wheat farmers that we use for some of our wheat for our vodka, we do a vodka for him that's all wheat from his farm, and then we're starting to do some uh, whiskeys for him, a bourbon and a wheat whiskey. So, yeah, we're doing... Some other cool collaborative collaboration stuff with some of the people that we're already working with, and the, you know, and then we do we do some brandies that we get uh, finished wines from like the Willamette Valley. We'll distill oh, yeah. that into brandy and then barrel age it. So yeah, just fun. And then all all these pears, these are all from one orchard in Hood River. Wow. Uh, the people who own the orchard actually contacted us to do the pear brandy. Yeah. So this is the first time we'll be doing that. Nice. And, uh, it's a fun collaboration. This is our we call it Ginger Master. Uh, it's the spirit that has been infused with the ginger but hasn't been proofed down and then we add cane sugar and agave to the the ginger liqueur so this is like the high high proof high potency ginger, ginger master and then we'll we'll proof that down and add sweeteners to that to make it a liqueur so but what proof is it right now what, what? it's similar to vodka a little bit less than you know like 95 percent especially since it's already soaked up a lot of the the, the ginger root and everything um when we proof it down, it's only like 25%, so like okay. 50, 50 proof. So. Oh, ginger. Yeah. Much of the unit. You, if you come in here on the day where we're like literally smashing all the ginger, the whole air, I mean, just, it smells like ginger all day long. Um, like I said, a lot of these are like projects that we've been working on that haven't even been completed or bottled or anything yet. We do a lot of like single barrel stuff, like this bootstrap whiskey is one that we've never really even bottled and sold yet. Um, this one's been in the barrel since 2016, so almost almost a year on this one. But you know, usually our whiskeys go till two and a half, three years kind of thing before we let them out. Fort George beer. So again, this is another collaboration. Another local brewery gave us some of their beer. We distilled that and, and barrel aged it. Pretty much cool, man. <laughs> but yeah, we should definitely let you guys try some stuff for sure. Uh, Sample taste of the spirits on their own or do some Yeah, yeah.